Hey there. Today I want to talk about an article that I found on Indeed.com and the headline is how to handle a job offer that doesn't match the advertised salary range, which already to start off, not even getting into the content itself, just the headline, I mean, that's a huge red flag. When the self-proclaimed biggest job board in the entire world is allowing articles to be published on their websites talking about fake salary ranges, I mean, that's a big problem. At least a lot of times on these economic reports we look at, people just blindly pretend like everything is fine. Indeed, it's straight out saying there's a problem. The first paragraph says that the job search process typically includes applying to a job, completing two or three rounds of interviews, and getting a job offer. Okay, even the first sentence here is out of touch. Maybe five years ago that was the process, but if you are lucky enough to not get ghosted left and right, then the job interview and job application process does not include just those things. So when you apply to something, if a human does get in contact with you, then you might have some sort of test or assessment to take, which would be the next step. Then you might hear from a recruiter at the staffing agency who's holding the job or someone in the HR department. And then from there, you might be lucky enough to talk to a hiring manager. Then after that, there's going to be a couple more rounds of panel interviews and maybe some additional assessments. The reality is to get a job these days, you're going in at least four rounds, if not five or six. So it's not as simple as it used to be where you just apply to a job two to three rounds, well, I think it says, yeah, two to three rounds, okay, and then you have the, the job offer. It's really not like that anymore. Then it says, once you get the job offer, you should evaluate it and ensure the salary meets your expectations. So far, I basically disagree with the headline and the entire first paragraph of this article. When you're applying to a job and salary is important to you as it is to most people, you wanna make sure you know the salary before you get into all this nonsense. A good company is going to at least give you the salary range on the job posting, on the job description itself. And we're going to talk more about that going forward when we talk about the ranges. But at least you should have some kind of generic range before you go down the path of getting an offer itself. If you apply to a job that looks like a good fit and there's not a salary range there listed, then you want to make sure that first screening call with HR, you go and ask the actual salary range. Now, hopefully by the time you get to an HR representative, it's not this huge range, but you need to at least make sure you know what you're working with. Never ever go through that entire process, waste all that time, only to be surprised at the very end by where the salary is. You should at least have a range to start off. Lately, I've not had a lot of really good advice for you because I'm struggling just like you are. You know, I'm going through the same things that you're going through. But one thing that I am having success with on the whole process is finding out what the salary is before I'm talking to a hiring manager. So the way that I'm doing that is when I get that first screening call, which is few and far between, let's be honest, but when that does happen, I'm asking them the salary range. So a lot of times the HR person will say, hey, so what salary did you have in mind for this position? And then every time this year when someone's asked me that, I respond by saying, well, I'm pretty flexible. Do you have the posted salary range in front of you? And then they'll respond with what the range is. And I usually will say, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much in line with what I'm looking for. Now, if it's gotten to the point where I've applied to the job, I've either looked on the job description for the salary itself, so it's not a surprise. And I like to see if the job salary range in the actual job description matches with what the HR representative or the recruiter is telling me because you don't wanna start off with a lie. If they posted the salary range, then that needs to be the salary range the whole time. Now, the last person that I talked to, the salary range, the bottom of it, started much higher than what the range was in the job description in the job posting, so that was quite nice. And I'm not gonna say that it's 100% accurate because I think I heard that recently Glassdoor has taken away the anonymity of the reviews. So it used to be you could just post anonymously your reviews and your feedback on Glassdoor for the company you work for, but the employers were really tired of that, so I'm sure that they fought. And now I don't believe anymore you can leave an anonymous 
feedback uh, for the company anymore. That used to be something that was really, really helpful for people so they can leave the salary range, an honest review. And the great thing about Glassdoor used to be you know, people were free to say whatever they wanted because it was anonymous, but also companies could not alter the reviews. So they couldn't get around the employers, couldn't get around the fact that they couldn't edit their own reviews. I mean, they can leave responses to it and kind of fight back if there's a bad claim against them, but they couldn't alter the reviews. But now without anonymous job postings on Glassdoor, there is really not gonna be a lot of people who are going and giving honest feedback on the jobs that they worked at. The first subheadline here says, why employers offer lower salaries than what's advertised. And it says, in some situations, your salary will fall outside the range provided in the job posting. Recruiter turned career coach Alex Bryant says the employers might offer a salary lower than advertised for a variety of reasons. Alex says one of the reasons is the job requirements have changed. In some cases, the job you're offered can differ from the job you applied for. It may be that the role requirements have changed, uh, Bryant says. If the role no longer includes leading a team, for example, the company may lower the salary to align with that change. And then there's some other ways as well. But the first reason is completely ridiculous. How can the job posting change that drastically. If it's a different job that no longer includes leading a team, then take that job posting down and put an accurate one. That's literally bait and switch where you apply for a job because the salary looks good. And then by the time you get to the interview process, they change the requirements of it and they lower the pay. Like that is so shady. Another thing that companies are doing, this doesn't talk about this in the article, but another thing the companies are doing is they're listing these jobs as remote and then you really go into the fine details of the job posting or worse yet, get to the actual hiring manager or the recruiter and then they say, oh, it's not remote, it's actually hybrid, so you gotta come in two days a week, but it's basically like remote. Or you gotta be in a certain state to do this job or it's not remote at all and they just use that as a way to get more people to apply for a job knowing that that is what people want, but they don't offer it and it's really another bait and switch. It says that the job can change in the following ways as well. One is location. Changing the work location from on-site to remote could result in new offer details. To me, that's a completely different job. Me personally, I'm not applying to any jobs that are not 100% remote. So if I apply to a job and then all of a sudden you say that it's on-site, that's a completely different role. Like we're not doing that. That is not what I'm looking for. That is a huge red flag and that's a huge issue. The second is the team. If your potential employer expects you to work the same job but on a different team, that could change your offer. How could that possibly be? Isn't the job opening supposed to be for a specific team that needs the help? Isn't it supposed to be, hey, we have this team, it's growing, and now they need another project manager, or now they need another developer. It shouldn't be like, oh, conceptually, we could use this person in our organization. No, 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 then that's a whole different job offer because the roles, requirements, the responsibilities, even the quote unquote culture fit will be drastically different if you're on a different team than the original posting was talking about. Then next is permanence. It says switching your role from a permanent to a grant funded position, for example, means that your salary is funded by money that may not be available on a continuing basis and could change the offer. So how could that happen? Like how could you have a job that is posted as a full-time permanent job and then it switches? Now it's one thing if they're honest with you, but that shouldn't be something that changes. If it's something that is relying on a grant, right? Like if you have a government job, it might be solely reliant on grant funding, government funding, completely understand, but you shouldn't pose that this is a full-time permanent job and then sneakily throw in the fact once you start hiring the person or start going through the application process that it's a temporary thing or that it won't start until you get the proper grant funding. That's very misleading. Another subheading of this article talks about companies conduct compensation analysis to guide their pay practices and see how the pay compares to that of their competitors. Although the compensation analysis 
usually done by the HR department is done before interviewing a lot of the times, employers might not realize until afterwards that their salary does not match what similar companies offer. In that case, they may change the salary accordingly. No, they may not. That is not cool at all. How do you not do that analysis before you do the job posting? Also, when you're at a corporation, they usually have budgets, right? So they'll say, hey, the budget that we have available for this team is so much money. It could be 50,000, it could be 100,000. That uh, shouldn't really change once you start the process. You should say how much of a budget your company has, whether it's 50,000 or 100,000, then you should do your competitive analysis to see how much other people are charging for that position or how other companies are listing that as far as salary goes. And then you can finally determine if you have the budget to even post for that job at all, or if you know someone else on the, co on the team has to suck it up and, and do that job. It shouldn't be you don't do a competitive analysis until after you already posted jobs. So to me, that sounds like they're going and posting the jobs. And then when people say, that they'll take less money than they originally budgeted for, they'll like, oh, well, I guess I can hire someone at a cheaper rate, so let's go ahead and reduce the salary that we're offering. That's what it sounds like to me. The next part is that they see your experience differently. Even if an employer sees you as a strong match in the job in the beginning, that could change once they learn more about your background. Initially, you might have been considered for a managerial position, but insights gained during the interview process suggest you may be better suited for an individual contributor role that pays less. So, I mean, that's, that's what we're seeing a lot now, right? Because it is an employer's market and they're able to get all these people to take these massive pay cuts, they can go and say, well, I mean, I know that at your previous job you made 120,000, but now, based off of the fact that everyone's desperate and people are willing to work for much less, we can give you a drastic pay cut. And, you know, we're gonna, <laughs> I think they're still gonna give you the same amount of work. So that article saying that, well, we were gonna hire you as a manager, but now you're qualified maybe just for a lower level. That's not, that's not changing. That's really not what is happening here. You're doing the same amount of work that they want you to do in the first place, just at a much lower level. So the idea that, they're going to give you less responsibility to go with the lowered pay is unfortunately not reality. They are going to give you the same responsibility or even more, but still lower your pay. The article is quite long and it goes on to talk about a lot of other things, including look at the holistic pay, like how much the benefits are, and maybe if there's other team building activities and other perks that the company offers, maybe gym membership and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, if an employer can't even be honest about the budget that they have for the position and they're not being very clear on what they're going to pay you, which is the whole reason we're working to make money, then I would say that's a red flag. And I don't think that is a company that you want to work for. Talk to you later.